And tonight on the Mac to the Future Livecast Go, I almost couldn't even remember the name of my own show. Uh, a couple of stories from our neighbors to the north in Redmond, Washington, and nothing whatsoever to do with the fact that I have trouble remembering and saying their CEO's name. Also, Apple releases a new iMac just in time to promote their switch to a completely different architecture. Yeah, that's that's tonight on the Mac to the Future livecast. Go. Hello, everybody. We are we are live and only twenty minutes late, and uh, that's sometimes how things roll. I am your host, Guy Sir. I'm bringing it up right here. Wow, it's almost like it's magic. Uh, Mac to the future. One of the Mac to the future hosts. My Mac.com podcast, Guy's Daily Drive. It's all there. It is all there. And uh, I am joined this evening by the very patient, Mister David Scalar. Hello there, Mr. David Sklar, or yeah. Ginsburg, as we sometimes call him, too. And, and, and it's I'm, 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 I'm trying to do a shortcut here, okay? So it's it. I say David Sklar it encompasses everybody. Okay, it's like I'm Tim Apple. It's, uh, <laughs> I'm, uh, and it's Satya Nandala to you. That's that's a Microsoft CEO, Satya. Right, 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 right. And micro, m- micro guy. That's what uh, that's what I'm going to call him. Micro guy. Doing great. Awesome. Because he's shorter than me. We are late. And we also have Mr. Wait, I gotta get rid of that. I'm so not prepared tonight. Mr. Warren Sklar. Hello there, sir. You're might not be, even uh, David Sklar, are you? It might be Sal Sal um Sal might be going. Sal must be going. Sal going. It might be Salma going. Salma going? Yeah. Isn't that a city like in Alabama? Selma? That's, Sel- that's, no, it's yeah. Selma. That's yeah. That, that's the Microsoft guy. Uh, Sal, I must be gone. Okay, sure. Yeah. We'll go with that. So, how are y'all doing tonight? Doing okay. Yeah. yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for how late we were. Uh, today was today was my wife's birthday. I took her out for like a late lunch, early dinner, and got back here and just woke up a little after seven o'clock, going, "I am not ready for this show at all." And that's sometimes what happens. So we're just going to, we're going to press on because that's what we do. So um, got a couple of quick takes here. Uh, actually, but before we do that, this is important to know right here. Marcus Benjamin is in his onesie. Mm-hmm. Great. Yeah. Very, very proud. It's, it's, yeah. proud. it's a proud moment in my life to know that. So. Yeah. yeah, I think so. Um, Mac OS Big Sur, the beta, is going to make dark mode even darker. The latest beta allows for disabling desktop tinting in system preferences. I have not yet tried this on the the one computer that I'm running the beta. And actually, that was on your old computer there, Warren, the the MacBook Air. Yeah. I cannot put, and you know, and here's here's the thing, guys. Mm. Do not put beta software on your production machines. Unless you're Warren Squire. I did that all- is a terrible idea. I did it right I did it on this. I, I in fact I don't have one piece of the I don't have one device that's not on beta software. It's unless you're Warren Squire. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. What I because did today, what I, I did would today, not be able to do this show. I would not be able to do this show if I did that. Well you could triple boot. Like my all my laptops, my three laptops right now will boot Catalina Big Sur, call me Sir, damn it, and uh, and Windows because of reasons. So you okay. just have to do it right. Now the phone. Uh, well, I've I've decided that the way to do it right is not to put beta software on my production machine. Uh-huh. So you're a coward. What kind Same. of time? yeah? Okay, Same here. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let's go with that. <laughs> uh, okay. So uh, have you have you have you tried this yet, Warren? No, it's dark, darker dark mode. No, I haven't. I just, uh, 
I was working on another project, which was uh, redoing my MacBook Air uh, with different operating systems again. So now I got, so now I'm triple booting on that one before I was sure. double booting. And then I was booting from, anyways, I'll try it tomorrow. Okay, so I'm a coward and you're a schizophrenic. Let's just get that right out there. <laughs> my, right lap, my, my laptops are. They run, they run yeah. multiple operating systems. <laughs> all at the same time. Ah, I am not paranoid. Why are you all against me? Okay, Who said that? very good. Who yeah, said that? Sorry. There's a voice. There's voices in my head. Um, Phil Schiller. David, I think that Phil Schiller is a swell Apple fellow. Isn't he swell? He's, he's swell. And could either one of you explain to me what that means? I read that and oh, I was like, yeah. okay, so he's giving up a high profile job to be an Apple fellow. I don't, I don't know if he's necessarily giving it up. I think, well, if you read, if you read the stories, he's, uh, he's 60 years old now. He's worked for, he's worked for Apple, what, almost 30 years. Um, yeah. He's, uh, he, he put in a statement that it was his dream to come, work, come true to work at Apple and, uh, uh, as long as they'll keep have me, I always bleed six colors, you know, the same old blah, yada, yada, yada. Uh, but you know, I think it was this time, just like, just like Johnny Ive, it was this time to move on and, 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 and Greg Jaws is, is going to take over and, uh, uh so Joss, Joss Wiec, and, uh, he's been around for a long time too. So, um, so they, and I, and I read another story about what, who, who are all the Apple fellows and there's a, there's a whole list of them going back, you know, to the early days, uh, including Steve, including Waz and, and the many others. Uh, Kai, Kai Kawasaki was another one. Um, uh, so he's going in, in the history books of Apple as uh, being the greatest marketing uh, v VP they had. So you think, you think he's retiring? You think he's stepping away? I think he's, I think he's just, he's stepping away, but he's still going to be involved. I'm sure they're going to ask him a, a lot, ask uh, of him uh, some ideas for marketing and such that I don't see him yeah. disappearing, but you're just not going to see him on any, at any, uh, at any keynotes anymore. That's for sure. I think they said, and, and, I think he said he'll still do some of those things. Yeah. You will do some things. It's just not it, Greg uh, Jaws is going to be the one that's uh, the yeah. man now. I think I cannot picture how, when, when you get to the level that these guys are at with, cause you know, you know, they've got stock options up the wazoo and, oh, yeah have, you know, millions of dollars in some cases, possibly billions of dollars mm. of Apple stock and they're set for the rest of their lives. What does it take to get somebody out of bed in the morning to do the same old nine to five when you have just that much money? I, I don't get it. Cause it's not the nine to five at, at this level. And pe people at this level are, with Phil Schiller, a little different. He's different than Johnny Ive in in a way. I think the company and Johnny Ive were at a point where they kind of didn't want to. Um, they were on a little bit of a different path, and and I think the you know still when you're at Johnny Ive's level, you don't really you know. It's you still leave on good terms and things like that, and you still help out. Phil Schiller, I think, is at a point where Apple. Like if Phil Schuller said, I want to still work here full time, Tim Cook would say, absolutely, like, we love you, come stay. Um, but he probably just doesn't want to um, do it anymore. He wants to, you know, he right. wants to do more filming and things like that. That's, that's so what he, he said. He, yeah. So you become a paid, almost like a a paid full time consultant. Spokesperson. Yeah. Yeah. You're a, he's a consultant for the company that's on their payroll. And, you know, he'll, he'll be the kind of guy where, you know, any time of day, you could send him an email or, or call him to, to ask him questions about something and he'll, he'll get back exactly. to you. And, and what he maybe. said, you know, yeah, <laughs> maybe. but believe me, for the, you know, the 10 hours a week that he might spend helping out Apple, he'll be paid very nicely and, and he'll, you know, um, you know, 10 hours or whatever. But, you know, his information is worth gold to Apple and that's why they keep him around. Um, Johnny, I was like that. And I think if he retired earlier on be, before the, the butterfly keyboard issue, that might've been a little bit different, but the, the butterfly keyboard issue, I think kind of soured things a little bit with Johnny, I, because it was his perception, uh, to make things thinner. And it was, you know, the public's perception that the, the thinness, you know, made some sacrifice. 
sacrifices to the functionality of the uh, the product. So I think that's why they kind of went a little bit. So separate. it was it was form form over functionality, basically. Oh. For Johnny, I yeah, yeah. yeah. And, well, yeah. it's like the, the obsession to make a desktop computer as thin as you possibly can when really, literally, nobody cares. Yeah. You know, well, I mean, well, if just the the fact that you can cut ch a, a large block of cheddar cheese with a twenty seven inch iMac, I don't think anybody was like, "Wow, well, that's a feature I've always wanted." You know, I mean, what was what was really the point in in making it even thinner? You know, sure, okay, you get great tests in a wind tunnel, but other than that, who cares? Guy, I'm talking about the laptops. He, he made the laptops thinner. <laughs> okay, well, do they, do they, how, how, how were the wind test tunnels for the MacBook Air? They flew like air. See, like air. there you go. Yeah. That's why they're yeah. named air. Yep. Yeah, they, <laughs> in fact, the, 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 the further up they flew, the more expensive they were. It was a high, it was a different different configuration. After you pick the, the memory and the hard drive yeah. size, it's the height of the uh, how much air it got when the kind of went through and, it. And whether or not it was aerodynamic, very good. Exactly. All right, we're gonna we're gonna move on to the main stories. Uh, a couple here from Microsoft, which really kind of surprised me as I was Ooh. going through this. Microsoft, that you know, the CEO, um, Nadella. The Bill, yeah, Gates, uh, the Bill Gates company. Yeah, Nelson, that Nelson guy. I, I can't remember his name. Nelson Martin. Satya uh, Nutella. Satya Nutella. Isn't that like a, a isn't that like a spread? No, that's new that's Nutella, not Nutella. Okay. That's Ted Nugent. Got it. Ted Nugent. Ted Nugent Ella. That's his name. Fever. Yeah. Microsoft to end to end tests with XCloud. Microsoft has been testing a gaming platform with the ability to play Xbox games anywhere through streaming and was trying it out on both Android and iOS and by extension, iPad OS. However, Apple's iOS policy of not allowing apps to be acquired outside of the iOS app store has led Microsoft to end their test with the operating system. Microsoft had seeded a preview version for about 10,000 people with the game Halo, the Master Chief collection, but will focus now primarily on the Android platform. So it seems like every single week there's this narrative that's being pushed that because of Apple's resistance to opening up iOS and by extension the iPad OS to alternative ways of, of getting applications that, that it's somehow limited. And uh, what do you, let's start with Dave. Dave, what do you think about that? Yeah, um, with anything with the, with this stuff, it's just hard to say with the, with the gaming. You know, I'm not, by no means am I in a, a, I I follow the, much of this in the gaming thing, so it's uh, aren't you lead? Interesting. But it, did I what? <laughs> aren't, aren't you elite? Aren't you elite aren't gamer? You elite, hard far from. Yeah. Me. Okay. Uh, so, but uh, it's what the kids say. I, 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 it's interesting that they're going to focus on the Android platform, but you know, so. So, so what, so it is, I mean, but, uh, Microsoft continues to support both platforms and I can't, I can't see it not, uh, uh, changing, you know, anything. Yeah. You know, okay. Warren. Yeah. No, I think if these companies think that if they keep, you know, insulting Apple's, uh, uh, store policies that they'll change it. Like if, if every week somebody keeps saying that their store's unfair or doesn't, doesn't do things uh, that it should be doing, um, then Apple's going to say, hey, you're right, and uh, we're going to change. Um, but as long as Apple's posting, you know, numbers like they're doing it, you know, to, the last week, I don't think they're going to change. You know, they don't care. And, and I don't know if they should or not, but, you know, because that's what they've been doing and that's what they're going to do. Um, so, okay, well, let me ask, let me ask you both something. So what is the, what is the number one main benefit of remaining with just the one app store for who for the user or for Apple? for users no not so much for app i mean apple it's it's money you know i mean that's really what it comes down to is money but for the end user and i guess by extension apple uh what is what is the main benefit of of not allowing outside people to create apps for ios and ipad os you'll get you'll get a lot more apps a lot of them will be Crappy, some of them. Crappy, well, with be, Android. Yeah, you'll you'll have Android, uh, and, and even though Android, ha 
you know, they let more people in and you can sideload things onto Android, but you'll just get, you know, what's going to happen is if they opened it up the first few years, a year or two, it's going to be crazy. Everybody's kind of like who wanted to put a fart app in there that, that Apple doesn't allow anymore or anything that, that you know, yeah. that, that might be somewhat shady. It's going to go in there. And then after a while, people are kind of, you know, realize that nobody's making money on this secondary store because this, this is where all the cheap people are going to try to find free stuff or junk and they'll stop doing it eventually and it will become a graveyard of, of nothing and then people will probably go back to the app store if it's not ruined by that point um you know it's it's you know pe- people think they want it until they get it i think it's what's going to happen and everybody thinks they want a secondary app store um, okay well, what about what about security is, is, isn't that a concern as well? If if Apple doesn't have control over the iOS App Store, and I mean, and there's you know there's a security issue we're going to talk about next. Uh, but one of the ways one of the ways that you introduce security issues, uh, as as far as um, a somewhat limited mobile experience with limited number of APIs and and all the rest of that, is to allow outside forces to bring in applications and or programs that may or may not have a, a detrimental effect on on the platform. So wouldn't side loading also possibly introduce insecurities? Depends. I mean, Apple could certainly lock. I mean, Apple could, if, if that happened, Apple could say any, any application that did not come through the app store has no access to any of the hardware, you know, Wow. <laughs> well, then it's it's it, if they did that, it wouldn't be that much different from yeah. what they're doing now. Well, yeah. I mean, right now the yeah. app store gives. Like, okay. Well, you can you can introduce an app, but it won't have access to cameras, microphones. You know the 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 various APIs of the operating system. So, yeah, pretty much the only thing you can do is is create a free fart app. Yeah. Side load a or- fart app. With a fart pack. <laughs> or, but you could, um, you know, the, the phone's at a point now where the phone tells you, at least iOS 14 beta does right now too, it tells you almost everything that is going on. Like when something's accessing a microphone, somebody, you know, it's copy yeah. pacing. E- even more so where people are getting, you know, companies are getting in trouble, legitimate companies, because they're, they're doing things that, that they're not advertising or doing. So, I mean, you could say, you know, Tim Cook could say, okay, go ahead, go nuts, sideload it. Your phone's going to tell you everything that it's doing, and you're going to say yes or no. And at that point, if you're sending your information to China, then that's on you at this point. They could do well, that. But they said that's not always the way, I mean, perception is reality. So if if the iPhone suddenly becomes unstable because someone has downloaded or sideloaded an application that was meant to, you know, do harmful things to that device, nine times out of 10, they're not going to remember that it was that sideloaded app where the instability started. They're going to go, oh, my, my phone is screwed up because Apple sucks. Because people are stupid. I mean, I, don't know. <laughs> I mean, really, I mean, that's, I, I don't mean to sound, you know. I, I, are you for the side loading or against them? I'm not sure where you're going with it. I'm not for iOS. I am because there's no history of it and the the one of the the main focuses of apple's mobile platforms has always been security to me anything that enhances that security is a good thing and anything that possibly takes that away is is a very bad thing um you know the the horse the horse left the barn as far as as far as mac os goes i mean that that's you you couldn't probably go to an app store only experience on the Mac OS without, without a huge backlash, but because it's always been that way in iOS and the iPad OS, uh, I think for the most part, other than, you know, the, the loud voices screaming for it, that nobody really cares that you can't sideload apps. Oh, I know the three of us don't. I think the three of us agree with the Apple app store and their practices at this point for the most part here because we understand it and we understand yeah. that we understand that if it's not that way then ios wouldn't be ios it would be android yeah and if i want android i'll buy an android phone sure yeah okay um so 
to, to kind of wrap this up, is there any way that Apple could allow Microsoft to sell games within their xCloud environment as you know, so that they could play Xbox games on an iPhone or an iPad and not violate the terms of service as far as sideloading apps and, and the rest of that for, uh, cause it would, it would basically be like a, uh, an in-app purchase. So couldn't, couldn't they do that? And then Apple still gets their, you know, make it some kind of deal on the back end as far as what Apple's cut would be, but have it be like a, an in-app purchase for other X cloud games within this, this environment. Who are you starting with? Oh, sorry, Dave, let's go with Dave. Yeah. I mean, if, if it if it doesn't violate violate the terms of service or what or what um, Apple puts out there, then yeah, it's all for it. But again, it's also going to compete against Apple Arcade. So you don't know. How, I mean, the way the way Apple's doing Apple Arcade is they got the games already built in, and it's part of that one app that they 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 get uh, they get access to. So um, hard to say if Microsoft would be able to come up with a way to be able to. "Quote unquote," sideload these these uh, games into the app uh, as an in-app purchase and still follow the guidelines of what uh, Apple says that that's how it has to be in in the App Store. Okay, Warren. So it's not just to be clear; it's not a, there's no sideloading really. It's it's a it's a subscription. It's like Stadia is what it is, and basically it's a it's it's a gaming it's a game platform. App. It's it's a platform. It's an app on on either the iOS or Android device that could play games from a catalog that you purchase, uh, and and it streams through Microsoft, right? Yeah, and it streams the game that you're playing. Um, so Microsoft was saying that they had there was just too many issues with the. I don't think they were even complaining about the App Store as much as the. Um, with the problems with iOS itself, as far as the, the limitations, probably of the things we were talking about with some of the hardware that needs the APIs for and needs to get, um, it has need to have more access than, than you have. Um, but if they figured it out, I think it, you know both companies would probably still benefit for it. I bet there'd be a lot of kids out there who would certainly pick up a, an iPad um, to be able to play, you know, if, if the games are any good, Xbox games, wherever they go. Um, you know, I, I know, um, is it Carl? Carl plays with Stadia and he says he's, it's hit or miss depending on, uh, what he does. Yeah. Um, I've got a, I've got a Stadia account and I tried it with some of the steam games that I own once. Cause you know, once, um, Catalina came out, a lot of my steam games stopped working cause they were all 32 bit instead of 64 bit. And it was just it was just not a great experience. So if, if you're trying to play a game over you know, and you have to stream it, you have to stream yep. all, all of the, 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 the functions of that game, what it is that you're seeing, what it is that you're doing. Mm -hmm. And you're relying on the, the speed of your internet connection. And I mean, mine isn't, isn't like, crazy good right now. It's going to change tomorrow, but it right now I've got like a hundred up hundred down which for everything that I typically do is fine. I mean, that that's, it's great. I'm, I'm able to work from home and all the rest of that. That's not an issue. But when you're, you're talking about Lag. high definition games and Lag. using, using a wireless controller mm -hmm. to control your character in, in whatever it's doing wirelessly through this game, well, you're introducing all kinds of potential lag that right. you know is going to make the the game just not a, a good experience in 2020. But you know, eventually it will work. You yeah. Know. Well, tomorrow I'm going to I'm going to gigabit Ethernet. I don't mean I don't mean work for you. I mean in general, like everybody. Yeah. Are, no, are, I, are, I I know what you mean. Yeah. Are you are you going to be gigabit up and uh, gigabit down? Once you're going to be your up speed. That's what I'm not sure about yet. I'll find that out Comcast, once they. Right? If it's Comcast, no, it's, it's it's no, it's it's the V word. Verizon? Yeah. No. Well, they don't they don't advertise in anything that I do, so oh. I don't like to get 
I don't like oh. to give companies free plugs unless unless I get something out of if it. If you're getting Fios and you got good up and good down, that's fine. Fios, I thought was yeah. Frontier. I thought they they sold that. Fios? No, Fios is Verizon. I guess it depends on where. It, and I I typically get high with with the hundred gigabit speeds that I have now. I typically get and I don't understand this. I typically get faster upload speeds than I do download speeds. I'm on I'm on Fios. I'm on Ethernet Fios right now. I am kidding. Da, da, da. All right, but we're gonna we're gonna move on to yeah, the next yeah. story. Eight hundred and eight hundred and eighty dollars. Uh, eight hundred and eighty megabits per second up and down. Okay, well that's yeah that's okay I guess. You think that's all right, right? Yeah, it's all right. Well, I don't get. <laughs> I'm, o- I'm only one eighth of that speed, so what do Crap. I know? <laughs> yeah. Microsoft. Okay. Security. What should I download? Microsoft Security. Um. There's been a security issue found in Microsoft Office thanks to a former NSA hacker, Patrick Wardle. Uh, He found a security breach within Microsoft Office that could have allowed an attacker to gain access to a Mac computer with a document that would contain malicious code. By utilizing an older version of the SLK format, which I'm not familiar with, he was able to bypass basic Mac security. The Mac OS doesn't even ask the user if they want the OS to open the file. However, to go on from there, the code tries to run a macro within MS Office that would open a dialog box asking for permission and relies on user impatience to click the warning away. The breach has now been patched within the latest versions of MS Office and Mac OS Catalina, but users of older versions of both might still be vulnerable. So let's start with Warren. Warren, what do you think? Yeah, non-story. It's one of those same old, same old stories. A researcher in a white coat in some lab discovered <laughs> discovered a uh, vulnerability that nobody else in the world ever uh, experienced and was patched before anybody will. So I always laugh at these because you know then people will post saying things like uh, you know see Max blah blah yeah see yeah 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 right I'm like see, vi- viruses on Max blah 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 I'm like you know show 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 me a screenshot of where this happened to you show me in the wild from anybody yeah, no, just you know what make make it actually happen you know record your screen and show me exactly this that you could replicate this could never happen so i mean that's like uh you call people out on these things too like somebody once told me they had a uh, um they had a uh, ransomware attack on on a mac no no windows environment pure mac I haven't seen it. I read one thing that there might they, they've discovered that it could happen, but I've never seen ransomware um, done on a Mac. Not because of anything other than the encryption process is different on a Mac, and it's just you know nobody's done it and, and nobody's allowed it. Uh, nobody wrote something that where you hit uh, your password will encrypt your files. I think just as a different system. So you call people on this out and like, no, no, I've seen it. I've seen it. Go. You know what? Okay. You My said- sister's brother's cousin's neighbor on his fourth wife's side was the one that it happened to. So you, I know it's real. You know, so I said, go ahead and show me it. Any Windows virus that's out there, you could disable your antivirus software and get that virus and just and, and demonstrate it. And nobody can do that on a Mac. All right, Dave. Yeah, same thing. I think it's it's a bunch of a bunch of crap. Honestly, I mean, it's just. Guy in a guy in a lab coat just uh, has nothing else better. What to is do. it with you two guys in lab coats? We What's hate the deal that. with that? Uh, <laughs> you guys, did show me where the guy in the lab coat touched you inappropriately. <laughs> <laughs> and this this is where we this is where we scream. Yeah, 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 <laughs> See yeah, Dave yeah. and I as like babies <laughs> being whipped. Yeah. Go away! Go away! <laughs> You Mac boys are gonna be trouble. Okay. <laughs> Not that, All right. All right. I needed that. Nothing else better to do. No. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm gonna remember this because you know, Halloween. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna go out and get a white, a lab, white coat. lab coat. <laughs> yeah. Scare, scare the hell out of a, everybody. Make sure you get a pocket protector in there too. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh that uh, it, with a calculator. It's a just calculator. poking right up through the oh, just through even the a slide roll. Just keep saying, I found the vulnerability. I found the vulnerability. It's there. It's the vulnerability there. is real. I saw it. And it's okay. been passed, but I've right. seen it. New, new, 
New, no IMAX. Yeah. Are you trying to move us on here, Dave? Is that what you're trying to do? Yes, I am. Okay. New Intel Mac released. A tech bump for the 27-inch iMac will use that. Intel's latest 6 and 8 core 10th gen processors and, whoa, a higher resolution 1080p webcam, which I'm totally not using at the moment. You can only get SSDs. So for storage lovers of uh, Apple's Fusion Drive, both of them, you will probably be unhappy. Max internal storage for those with big pocketbooks uh, is up to eight terabytes of storage inside these beasts. And you can also add in up to 128 gigs of RAM. Base model for $1799 has a 3.1 gigahertz, six core i5, eight gigs of RAM, 256 SSD, and a four gigabyte Radeon Pro 5300. Radeon. So if this had come out prior to WWDC, I think a lot of people would have been like, whoa, that's that's like fantastic. But what do you think they're saying now? Let's start with Warren again. What do you think, Warren? Uh, I think people who would be in the market would still be interested in And I think this computer probably would last. I think it would last the life of the computer. Even, even. Oh, you mean as far as updates and all the rest of that goes? Yeah, I mean, what you know, it's like six, seven years, I think, you know, is an average life for a computer. And I think six, I think it's going to run whatever people want it to run, even after the switch to Silicon, uh, Apple Silicon. I think it's going to run its course uh, of, of time. Um, you know, it's a nice. It's not for me. I, I, you know, it's just funny. Tim Cook said we we still have uh, we still have Intel uh, Max in the pipeline. So you know, like I think right before that show, somebody whispered in. He's like, we have this whole stock room of, <laughs> filled we, with that, computers that we never sold these model IMAX before we decided we were going to. What do we do? Oh, quick, you know, quick, put them all put them all on Wish. Yeah, no, okay, <laughs> we got, we we got these. Man. So you know, whether this is the last. Um, you know, he said we saw some Intel Macs out there. He might be saying we still have Intel, some Intel Mac out there, and this might be it. Um, it's possible because it was just left over from the previous. What set. was what was ready to go before they yeah. decided that this was going to be the switch? Yeah, what do you think, Dave? So things. Yeah, and uh, interesting also see that they they it says new for the twenty seven inch, but they still selling the twenty one point five inch. And if you go into the twenty one point five inch, it it shows. 256 solid state is the standard, but they still are, they're still offering the one terabyte fusion drive. If you want as an option, for at no additional that. cost. Yeah. Um, why? So why would you do it? Yeah. I mean, I'd rather be at 256 solid state and just deal with it. If I was really in the market, do that. Um, but yeah, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I look at this and I also look at the iMac pro, which starts at five grand, uh, which is Xeon processors <laughs> up to 10 and 18 cores, which could be, you know, you could put it at the, at the cost of a Mac Pro, um, but the uh, the the fact of the matter is, I think these are here to stay for a good good four, five, six years. I mean, I don't think anybody should have any worry if they're in the market to getting a new iMac. Um, it, it, this is a no brainer. I mean, you just especially people who have you know if they have five and seven year old iMacs now. I mean, if they're ready. I mean, I I just don't see it go, silicon the, the Apple Silicon going in these iMacs for the next two, I mean, for the next year, maybe two years. Cause they're, they're already still, you know, having, they're already gonna be working on getting it working in the MacBook Air or the MacBook Pro. Um, I would venture to say maybe they'll have it in the mini since they had the developer kit in the, in uh, tested in the mini, yeah. but who knows, you know, the way they've treated the mini where it would be, they'll, they'll probably be the last thing they do <laughs> is, is update that one, but uh I just don't see it not happening. People, it, it it it's fine. If you if you're in the market, get get it. I mean, if you're not in the market for an iMac, if you're happy with what you have, stay with it. Yeah. If this was released after the the switch, maybe I'd be a little different. But we're still nobody ha knows for sure exactly when the yeah. switch is going. There's happen. no time frame with yeah. Silicon. Yeah. Or or what the what the order of of what hardware hardware will be released will be. Right. You don't know. Released. I mean, the first few years, ARM Apple Silicon is going to be a little more sketchier in support, I think. Then you almost have to question: Do you want to buy the first gen Apple Silicon yeah. machine? 
as compared to the previous gen Intel. Why not both? At the same time. At the same time. <laughs> yeah, every, every, everybody works out that way. Um, well, based on previous experiences, as far as oh, a bunch of dust in here, as as compared to what uh, was going on before, <laughs> um, the first gen power PC machines were very very iffy, and the first gen. I don't know what is there is like all kinds of weird dust and stuff going on. Either that, either that or I'm losing my mind. You're and it wasn't that not that far a stretch. That, that sleep haze you had. Yeah. Sleep haze. I think you're blowing us kisses. Yeah. <laughs> so um basically first gen processor switches for Apple have I mean they've been okay machines, but certainly nothing that's been you know, blow me, blow me away out of the water kind of thing. I, you know, the very first Intel Macs were uh, single core. Oh, what did they call those? Um, it was, it was like a, a, a single core. Oh, I can't remember the name of them now, but it was, it was like, not that they, they weren't that great machines. And within, Within six months, I believe pretty much all of them had been replaced with, at the very least, dual core machines. So, you know, whether you want, if you're looking long term and you need a Mac today, well, then you have to go with Intel. But even after a Silicon comes out, um, it's going to be, I think it's going to be kind of the same thing. You either wait for the second gen Silicon Macs to come out or you buy a, a previous gen that's probably, you know, Intel Mac, that's probably going to be fire sale priced. Core Solo, yes, thank you. As compared to Core Duo, I couldn't remember it. Thank you, Marcus. Or Han Solo. Yeah, or Han or Solo. Han, Chewbacca, Han Solo. that's what they should call it. Much better than the Princess Leia machines, because yeah. so whiny. Yeah. All right, we're going off. Okay, we're, yeah, we're, we're kind of, we're kind of losing it here. Uh, let's start with Dave. Dave, if people wanted to get a hold of you and and tell you things, how would they do it? They do it by going to InTouch with iOS at InTouch with iOS.com. Listen to our podcast. Which has a new, it's a new site, by the way. I don't know if, you, if you've said that before. I have said that before, and I've even improved <laughs> it even more. So we've got some nice uh, uh, nice updates to the episodes. And the Let me guess, more nice. marshmallows. You went with a more, marshmallows. more marshmallows. There's even a featured okay. desk. There's even a featured episode page if you click the tab at the top. And sweet, I've got I've got the hundredth episode uh, video stream right at the top of the page, and then the, all the episodes below it. So yeah, you got some easy ways of getting and listening to us. So uh, check it out in touch with iOS.com, and my Twitter is Dave G six five. Okay, Warren. Uh, just follow Dave. You'll find me eventually, and, and you'll be there yeah. somewhere. Yeah. Somewhere. I'll be there. <laughs> Warren is switching back to silicone, which okay. most people here aren't going aren't going to understand. But that is, mm -hmm. oh yeah. See now, I can't I can't show that comment. I did it on purpose last time. I'm or, uh, Marcus, I can't I can't show that comment here on <laughs> screen. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. But it's it is funny. Mm. Okay, uh, if you'd like to get a hold of me, my email address is guy at mymac.com. Twitter is Mac Parrot and or Vert Shark. The podcasts besides the Mac the Future live cast. Yeah, the My Mac podcast that I've been doing for so long, I can't even remember when we started. And uh, Guy's Daily Drive, which comes out eh, whenever I feel like it. Whenever um, if you drive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, if you'd like to see everything that I do, you can pretty much go on over to VertShark.com where there's dedicated links to all of the audio and for the fine audio and video content that I create, uh, I am, I am, I'm Guy Searle over there on the YouTube. So if you, if you go over there and subscribe, make sure to like, share, subscribe. And if you miss it the first time, like, share, subscribe right over there. And we would really appreciate it. And there's somebody has a weird bird. Where, where, where is that bird coming from? Uh, but I think, uh, I think that is going to do it for this evening. Thank you all so very, very much for joining us here on the Mac to the Future live guests go. We really appreciate the fact 
we know that you have a choice in content and we are ever so happy that you have chosen us we don't really quite understand it but we're very very happy that you've done so it has to do with the silicon. so does it have to do with the silicon okay <laughs> yeah. yeah say good night gracie yeah, so good night gracie we'll see you all next week right here right on this very page the mac to the future live cast go good night